in your calculators, we've got y1, y2. Um, for your x min, that'll be the negative 2 pi. Your x max will be positive 2 pi. Your y min will be negative 5. Your y max will be positive 5. That's all you really need to do. Don't change anything else. Okay? Is everybody good? And so then on your screen, you should have two graphs. The first one is y equals the sine of x. Okay? Now, the second one should look like this. How'd I do? Fantastic. I think it looks pretty similar. Okay. Now, using some of the vocabulary that we learned yesterday, how is my red graph different from my blue graph? The slopes? Well, so is slope usually implies like straight line. Yeah, so which of, of the words in this table, y'all, which one of these is like the depth of those troughs, troughs or the height of those, the maxes there? Well, that's the, where they are. But the word amplitude is the way we described the distance, from the distance on our graph, the distance from that midline to the trough. Okay? So the red amplitude is one. Okay, what about the blue? What's that distance? Three. Thank you, Aiden. Oh, is there another uh, packet? And I'll send you the video. Okay, cool. All right. Now, what about the midline for the two graphs? Has that changed? I don't think so. So we have, um, in some respects, we can look at this blue graph, and we had, like, a midline smack dab through the center for both of them at y equals zero. So what did this three in front of the sine x do? Raises it up. It will be, we gotta be really, really careful. It technically stretched it up, okay? It made that amplitude different. So. Whether it's sine or cosine, it doesn't matter. When you have y equals uh, some number in front of your sine function, that number, the number in front, is always your amplitude. In other words, if I want to make sure my amplitude is a certain number, I can also like find, figure out what do I want my amplitude to be, and then that's the number that goes in front of the function. All right, so what if I say I want a sine curve whose amplitude is one and a half? My function would then have to be 1.5 times the sine of x. Question so far. How are we doing? 
That's not, that's not a question, though. I don't know why I'm confused, I just, and I don't know what to clarify. I'm just confused. Okay. How do you find, like, the sine squared? I'm not asking. So I asked you what is the equation. So we have an equation, and then we have the graph, yeah? So this is saying, I, I want to know what equation could I type into my calculator so that the amplitude would be one and a half. And that answer is one, one and a half times the sine of x. That, that that number in front is how you change the amplitude of a graph. Why one and a half? Because isn't that... Because that's what the question one. says. But, but where is one and a half on a graph? It's not. That question is a new question. It's not referring to the graph. Okay. All right. What we so. All right. Now, what if I asked you guys? Instead, you're going to go back into your calculator and make your y1 the cosine of x and y2 the cosine of x, and then throw a plus one on the end of it. So guys, for y1 in, equals the cosine of x, this should, so, so let's talk about some things we learned about yesterday. Cosine starts at its highest point. So notice that I have that amplitude of one of that basic cosine graph that we learned yesterday, okay? And so we know for y equals cosine x, this is what we talked about yesterday. We know the period is 2 pi. Okay, and one of the things that I want you to start thinking through is that whenever we're dealing with cosine, the basic form of the graph is going to be, I'm going to start at a high point, I'm going to hit a minimum, and I'm going to come back up to that high point. And that's my one period of a cosine graph. Okay? So, if this is my highest point right now, okay, and my period is 2 pi, the next time I hit my highest point is going to be 2 pi away because my period is 2 pi. That's how long it takes for the graph to repeat itself. Are we comfortable with that so far? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make another point right here. Everybody good? All right. Now. For this graph, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, my minimum is going to be halfway between these two points, yes? And it's going to be at negative one because it's the amplitude, it's going to be on the other side. Okay? So one of the things, uh, one of the things you are going to be asked to do is to come up with a graph. Okay? Where I will give you the function and you tell me the graph. The other you're basically going to do either. I give you the function and you give me the graph, which your calculator can help you with, okay? Or I give you the graph and you tell me the function. Is this okay? So the basic premise is it's going to look like a zigzag. But we know that it's not zigzagged. It's, in fact, curved. Now, guys, when you did y2 equals the cosine of x plus 1, how did that change the graph? Did it raise the midline to 1? It raises every point up 1, which essentially... Don't, 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 don't. So the period is still 2 pi, the amplitude is still 1, and now my midline is y equals 1. 
So today we're going to focus on two different ways our graph can change. The amplitude and the midline only. That's it. And then how do we, while looking at those two things, make sense of it? Okay? You're not supposed to understand this yet. You're not supposed to be able to do this on your own yet. You're not supposed to have mastery yet. This is like, you know, day one of this. Cool? This was day two. Day one of the transformation team. All right. So, we essentially have, like, right now, we have three things we're going to start thinking through, okay? To come up with our graph. I'm going to write down four, but one of them is always going to be the same answer for now, okay? Things you'll, we want to think through are the amplitude, the midline, and actually we're going to do those in the opposite order, but that's okay. Uh, the period, and we're going to talk about the start, okay? Those are the, those are the things we need to, in order to draw our graph. I'm going to kind of take you through a reasoning process. If it doesn't work, we'll find a different one. That's, that's the whole point of learning math in lots of different ways. Okay, so we look at our equation to answer our questions. Now, for right now, y'all, your period's always going to have the same answer. It's always going to be 2 pi. We're not going to deal with how we change the period yet. All right, guys, what number is in front of my cosine x? An invisible one. So what is my amplitude? It is one. What about my midline? Negative two. Negative two. So are you guys okay with this? All right, now what do we know about co cosines? So this is where we go back. We're going to go ahead and say that this starts at a max. All right, so how can we use this information to sketch our graph? Let's check with the end. Zero, nope. Would the first point be at, um, zero, negative one? Zero, negative one. So it would have to move down to? Yeah. So here's my piece of advice to you guys, all right? What I like to do is sketch the midline that horizontal line at negative two, okay? And then I like to come up with these like lines that are one amplitude away, okay? So my amplitude is one, so I'm gonna make this one above and this one below. And now I've created a road for my function to bounce in between. And so to me, that's always the easiest place to start. And then we say, wait, where did this function start? On a? On its maximum. So then I can go to the line, like I can go to start the function, and I know the maximum is somewhere on this top line. And it just kind of helps me see where to put it. Okay, where should I put my next point? At the end of the I, say that louder. Like at the end of a period? Yeah. I know i has got to go all the way through and finish at 2 pi because that's how long it takes to repeat itself. So I'm going to put another maximum at 2 pi. And just for kicks, I'm going to do that on the other side. Okay? And then we say, all right, we got to go down to the minimum and back up. Where's the minimum going to be? Negative pi. Well, we're going to have one of them at negative pi. Positive. And one of them at positive pi. And then it crosses the midline halfway from there. Halfway between each of those. And now these are all the points I would need to see on your graph to come up with this equation. One last thing we have to do, you know, sketch it. How are we feeling? Is this okay? It doesn't have to be great. Just okay. I'm just looking for okay for right now. And if, guys, if you put this in your calculator, guess what you're going to see? This exact graph. 
So nobody wants to hit me yet? Ten times worse? Twice as worse. <laughs> it's really never my intention to make you guys miserable. I only joke when I say that it's my goal to make you miserable. Huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Guys. So let's go ahead and do our midline. Amplitude. Our period and the starts. Yes. Yes. Tell me something I know, y'all. The two pi. The pi is important in that, but you got the right. You're good. It's all good. What else? The amplitude is three. Okay. And this is, where does this start? On the max. See, this isn't so bad. Cosine always starts on a max. Max. Sine starts at a midline. All right, so then I'm going to sketch my midline. And do my amplitude on either side of it. Now, um, maximum point, because that's where it begins. Zero, two. Hmm? Yeah, the point zero, two. And then we do one full period on each side to get to the next maximum. Now what? The minimums. the minimums. Halfway in between. And then where it crosses the midline, halfway in between those. Just sketch your curve. What do you guys think? I feel like this part needs to be shorter. It's already shorter. Shorter. How about y equals 3 sine x minus 1? Okay, I'm going to draw it on the same graph. The midline, the amplitude are the same, yeah? Are they not always true? For sine and cosine? For sine and cosine, yep. Like, whatever changes, they would have the same. So this would be the same, and this would be the same, okay? Uh, but both of the ones we've graphed, like, not right away have been... Um, I want to give you one that starts at equilibrium. So the biggest difference between the two here is this one starts at the midline, okay? 
So for the sine graph, my first point is right here. And so what does one period of sine look like? Well, if I'm starting at the midline, I've got to go up, back down, and then back up to end there again. That's like the difference between a period of sine versus a period of cosine, okay? So you guys tell me, where do I have another point? On each side of the midline. Oh, like right here? Yeah. And on and right, the other side as well. Okay. Because that's where one full cycle. Yeah. All right. Now, what's the halfway point on this graph? The middle. Like zero. Uh, so I also have a point here and here. Does that make sense? Okay. And then I hit my maximum halfway. And my minimum three quarters of the way. All right. All right. So now, this time I want you to tell me what equation should I have so that my function has an amplitude of 3, a midline of negative 4. And, and I want it to be a sine equation, not a cosine equation. So right now, you can almost think of this as blank sine of x plus blank. And you just need to fill in those two blanks. So that first blank is what? 3, because that first blank tells me my amplitude. And then the negative 4. That's it. Is this okay? All right. Lastly, what if I give you a graph? Right? What do you think we should do? Figure out, find out the amplitude, midline, and period, maybe? Well, I said so far. You with me? Okay. Tell me any of the the periods two pi. I'll give you that every time. Starts in the middle. Starts, starts in the middle. middle. So guys, if it starts in the middle, what does that tell us? Sine. That it's a sine curve, not a cosine curve. Okay. We can tell that the midline is negative one because that's where it crosses the y-axis. In this case, we can, but I'm actually going to take a slightly different approach. Okay. You guys with me that if I draw this line across, I can t say that this is at three. And if I count here, we got one, two, three, four. This is at negative five. And you can see that from the graph. Is that okay? And so the midpoint of those two, so if I do three plus negative five over two, That gives me the midline that way, which is a little bit more reliable. My amplitude is 4. Uh, 
sometimes the midline's harder to see where it is, especially if it's a cosine graph. If you want to find the midpoint of any two numbers, you add them together, divide by two. So, so the midline's halfway between these two marks. That's just, that's just your midpoint formula. All right, so what's my equation? It's y equals 4 sine x minus 1. That's all you need to know. How do you know the amplitude's 4? Because if this is at negative 1, this distance is 4, and this distance is 4. Today, great assignment. Here's what you guys will do on Monday. Because I go, like I go to the y-axis. Because it starts at x equals zero. And I look, and I look at this point, and I say it's. Yeah, but but where what relative point is it on the graph? It's at the middle of the graph. This point is not a high point or a low point, yes? <coughs> so you look at where it crosses the y-axis, and you say, hey, is that one of the high points, or is that the middle line? So, the one for... Oh. It's the crypto market.